to make your mask, you will need scissors, a seam ripper, thread, elastics such as ponytail holders or headbands, and pins. You'll also need three pieces of fabric cut into nine by six inch pieces and some wire. A pipe cleaner will do cut about two and a half inches long. This will be your nose piece. You can zigzag your pipe cleaner or whatever nose piece you're using to the wrong side of the fabric about half inch from the edge on one of the nine inch sides. Two of your fabric pieces will be for the outside of the mask and the third piece will be an extra inner layer. For added filtration, I use a vacuum bag filter for my third piece cut to the nine inch by six inch size. I ordered these vacuum filter bags from Amazon and I can make three to four masks from one bag. Rip the seams from the bag to get the most usable fabric and then cut to size. Lay your two outer fabric pieces together, right sides touching, and then add your third layer on top. Align the corners and pin. For the elastic ear pieces, you can use ponytail holders, one for each ear sewn to the corners. You can also use one quarter inch elastic or elastic sport headbands, which you can see laying on the table. Cut these into seven inch pieces to use. Pin a cut edge of the elastic between the right sides of your outer fabrics so the elastic will be accessible when you turn everything right side out. Pin as close to the corner as you can on the six inch sides. If you look into the opening, you should be able to see the line of the elastic between the two right sides of the fabric all the way down the six inch side. Next, sew a one quarter inch seam around the entire edge, leaving a three to four inch gap in which to turn it right side out. Putting pins at your start and stop points is a good reminder so you don't sew the whole thing shut. Be sure to reinforce the corners where the elastic is to ensure they are fully caught. To achieve this, you can backstitch a few times or sew over the corners again after you finish the perimeter. If you are sewing the edge with the nose piece now, be sure to sew above the metal to keep your needle safe and ensure that the nose piece won't be caught in the seam. Now it is time to turn it right side out. Put your hand in the opening and push out all the corners from the inside to get the sharpest corners. Your elastic should now form semicircles on either short edge, and these will slip over your ears. Fold the opening to the inside of the mask and pin all layers together to create your final seam. Next, we will create the pleats. We will put in three pleats on the short side. I eyeball the measurements, but you can use a tape measure. Create the first pleat about one and a half inches down from the top. The top of the mask is the edge with the nose piece. Fold the mask fabric up at the 1.5 inch mark and then back down to create about 1 quarter inch to 1 half inch pleat. The other two pleats will start about a half inch from the bottom of the last pleat. Pin all pleats in place. Repeat on the other 6 inch side so the pleats match. The final step is to top stitch around the entire perimeter of the mask with a straight stitch, being sure to catch the opening and all pleats. Because you are top stitching, your thread color will show, so pick a coordinating or contrasting color of your preference. The short sides will have a lot of bulk due to the pleats and the elastic edges. Go slow and hand advance your machine if necessary. I use a denim machine needle due to the bulk, but a universal needle works as well. When you sew the edge by the nose piece, be sure to sew above the metal to keep your needle safe. After you finish the perimeter, zigzag stitch the nose piece again to ensure it stays in place. Finally, trim all of the excess thread and your mask is done. Thanks for watching my tutorial. I hope this helps you and stay safe out there.